just heard from my colleague Dave Vellante and Sudhir Srinivasan from Dell on the overview of Apex Cloud Platform. I'm Rob Streche, analyst with the Cube Research, and today we're going to talk to some people from Dell and Red Hat about a joint cloud offering. I'm so excited to welcome back to the Cube Caitlin Gordon, Vice President, Product Management for Multi Cloud and DevOps at Dell and Chris Morgan, Senior Director of Hybrid Platforms at Red Hat. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's, this is fun because I think, again, when I look at cloud and I look at hybrid and I look at going different places, I really do think, you know, Red Hat and Dell, these are two of the major brands that are pretty much everywhere in here. So. Chris and Caitlin, you know, today is really exciting because you're here to announce uh, the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift. And I, I think, again, this is one of those that uh, is super exciting in the fact that, you know, you can take your applications that you've containerized and such multiple different places. So Caitlin, can you share with us what brought you to this partner together and bringing this to market? Yeah, I mean, it is definitely an exciting day for us. And you know, our customers for a long time have continued to struggle with how do they get better agility? How do they get more flexibility in where they build, where they deploy their applications? Now that was for a number of years, virtualization. Increasingly, that's containerized workloads. Gardner predicts that 95% of enterprises are going to have containers deployed in production by 2028, which is not that far away. And really for customers, it, that means it's a combination of public cloud and on-prem. And we knew that we really wanted to help simplify that experience on-prem. And there was clearly only one partner to work with to do that, and that was Red Hat. And that was really why it was a natural combination of Dell to simplify that experience. Red Hat is the leader of container orchestration on-prem to come together to bring this to our customers. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out who the other 2% is that's not <laughs> gonna have containers deployed in production because yeah. I, I haven't talked to a customer who isn't building in microservices and containers. So Chris, why don't you share your thoughts? Uh, you don't have to share them particularly on yeah. Caitlin, but on, on, on the joint <laughs> offering here and what, what, what are you bringing? So you, for me, this the journey started, I guess, 18 plus months ago. And I'll be honest with you, when we were first asked, it's like, Dell again, but now it's just what's been really exciting is are the changes. Um, you know, this is about creating an experience, as as Caitlin mentioned uh, before. You know, we've had a long history with Dell where it's been about putting our operating system on a piece of metal, and this is really about now taking a lot of that and bringing it together. I mean, in in many ways, you know, we've been about hybrid for a long time at Red Hat, and so this is really an extension of that where hybrid's becoming more about the experience than just a consistent technology. Yeah, I, I think that that is the key, is doing it together and being very integrated because that's where, you know, platform engineering needs to be easier and things of that nature. So let, let's kind of get into Apex Cloud Platform for Red, Red Hat, OpenShift, and I will get it right most of this time, <laughs> but, you know, and Kaylin, why don't you kick us off here and kind of tell us how this platform is different and what's special about it? Yeah, in a lot of ways, our partnership is not new, but the level of this partnership is what is new. This is truly a jointly engineered, Chris and I talk a lot yes. because it is truly <laughs> jointly engineered, be. and it's a turnkey appliance that we have built truly to simplify the experience. But some, there's a lot of really unique things about this platform. You know, a lot of what we talk about now is that this is so unique that we're having to really explain the basics of it to a lot of people because it is so unique with nothing any, any either of us have ever done before. A couple, couple pieces of that, right? It's optimized for bare metal, which we'll dig into later, hopefully. it's That, that alone is very different. We've unified the application and the data plane. So you really collapse that down and you really simplify the whole stack. And it brings together the compute, the storage, the container orchestration, all in one turnkey experience. I, I had to double check these numbers for my marketing team, <laughs> but we have simplified the management and reduced the management tasks by 
98%. So there's like another 2% left of something left that's that you still have to do. Today. I think it's a click a that yeah. you still have to yeah. do. Yeah. You've really I think you just calculated wrong. I think you <laughs> <may> have, <laughs> I did double check it. Yeah, so I think it's right. I think you calculated yeah. wrong. If the simplicity is that the level of simplicity that we're bringing here and the optimizations on bare metal is just extremely unique. Yeah. And I would add it, if, it is unique, but it's also unexpected. You know, we hear, as I'm sure all of you hear, oh, we're going to the public cloud. And, you know, it, I kind of, I don't know if I could say, but it's just making bare metal sexy again in some ways. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it never went away. But I think as, as we talked about, there's, uh, you know, VMs are considered legacy now. And so this is really a way, if you want to modernize the infrastructure, it, it's a way you bring your containers and your VMs and gosh, even other clusters together on one control plane. And that, that to me is really what makes it a unique offering for those customers that are, are looking to upgrade their infrastructure, but keep some things the same. I mean, we all still have mainframes, right? And those were supposed to go away in the mid nineties. Right. Uh, and so I, I think it's the same that we're gonna see here too. Yeah, well, it's funny because I also know that, that you can run OpenShift on a mainframe, which is a, another funny <laughs> thing. So, but I, I think a lot of it is about, you know, the customers and why they should care, right? I mean, customers, you know, to to our discussion already, are really leaning into microservices. And we were talking, and I think on average, uh, the customers have in their cloud native applications, they have something like 18 to 20 different containers are part of applications. So, you know, again, that manageability and ease of use and that integration from the bare metal has to be there. So Caitlin, you know, why should customers, you know, really care about and how are they going to benefit from this collaboration? Well, the the first thing is that 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 bare metal piece is so important. We've talked about it. That's a cost to complexity reduction. It's also a performance increase for your workloads because you really have removed that layer. And it's actually gives you uh, security uh, benefits as well because you've really reduced the attack surface. So that piece of this is really, really unique. And then what we've built together is just something that we call it a turnkey appliance, but it's really a combination of the, the power of Red Hat software, the power of Dell software, and the, the power of the Dell infrastructure really coming together to provide that unique experience to our customers. Yeah. I, I think to me, it is it is really about, you know, kind of the build, deploy, run aspect of it for cloud native applications. I think that to me, making platform engineering kind of easier because pla let's be real, platform engineering is the new IT and it, it, you can put whatever name on it, but people have to come up to and speed. And we will put a new name on it. <laughs> we, we will. It's, a, and, it's already happened. And I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised it's an not an acronym, but you know, we'll, we'll but, you know, how does this really, you know, why don't we start with you, Chris? How does this really meet the flexibility that customers need? Because again, this isn't new, but it's new in how you make it easy for them, right? So we, as you mentioned, th there's a modernization happening. When we first did all this, it was about modernizing the apps themselves when you go to containers. And to your point, the platform engineering role continue to evolve. It's like, well, they need the infrastructure in order to support that. And when we talk about the simplicity and, and things that Caitlin was mentioning, to me, there's a couple of personas there. There is that platform engineer and admin. They're going to love this. Like, literally, it's their utopia. I can't even begin to tell you it's ridiculous. And then on top of that, though, if you're a developer, you're, if you're used to working with OpenShift for your apps and all the different things we have, it's that same experience wherever you've been doing it before, except now it's nicely integrated to a point where even Dell support is a part of this appliance. So right within the console, within the OpenShift console, there's this phone home capability, which I absolutely love myself because we don't even do that anywhere. This is just absolutely fantastic. And so what's in it for the customers is that simplicity that, you know, you've got a best of breed. You know, this is, to me mimics offerings that Red Hat has with some of the hyperscalers and that level of partnership. And I just think, the customers would just benefit greatly from all of it. Yeah, what what about, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, here? I could geek out on the infrastructure side like a little bit, because I have to. You know, it starts at day one, and the deployment time, when you look at how quickly you get to deploy this, it's actually in a open shift and bare metal, it can take, you know, up to 10 days to deploy that in kind of a standard build-it-yourself approach. What we've been able to do here is reduce that down to hours. So a 90% reduction in deployment time, which is really powerful because that means you can be 
up and running building your applications faster and deploying them faster. That means you get to really invest in your business. I mean, that's very powerful. But of course, that happens, you know, deployment happens once, so we're proud of that. But it's really, it's that day two operations benefit that we talk about that, yes, it's fully integrated into the experience, right? All a single line of support. But some of this kind of magic from the Dell side is what we call the Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software. And it really welds that whole experience together. And it does things like a continuously validated state all the way from the BIOS to the firmware, all the way up to OpenShift to make sure that that entire stack is validated to work together. We ensure that when you do an upgrade, it's a seamless one-click upgrade. And you have the peace of mind that we've worked together to make sure that whole stack works. So it's easy to get up and running. It's easy to manage day to day. So then focus your energy on then using that platform <laughs> to actually build those That's applications. Right. Well, I, I'm so glad you brought that up though, because I want to even double click further on that day too. That's really what this is about. So in the Kubernetes community in general, I don't care what distribution it is, OpenShift or otherwise, upgrades are one of the main complaints. And, and so what's really beautiful about this is you're not, upgrading OpenShift, right? You're upgrading the Apex platform. So maybe the next release might have an OpenShift upgrade in it. It might have another component in it, but you don't worry about that as the administrator, right? We're, we're building the magic as it were inside to allow that kind of seamless upgrade experience. Yeah, I, I love the outsourcing the S-bomb to, <laughs> yes, to <right>. Dell basically <laughs> and helping with the OpenShift stuff. Because to your point, I, I, you know, when I talk to people like you know, Cloud Native Con, KubeCon, or wherever, or just generally at any of these other events, that is one of their big things about, like you said, being close to being hyperscaler. How do you have a true cloud platform that takes away all of that worry for you and really makes it simple? Because I, it, that has to be there because people are so used to it. Yeah, well, the that is actually was a mission statement that was given to me by the Red Hat CEO 18 months ago, he says, Chris, I want to slide in a pizza box and I want it to boot up and say, are you going to join an existing cus a cluster or a new cluster? And that should be the experience. And we're, we're, we're pretty close right now with this appliance, I have to say, so. And everybody loves pizza boxes. So, I mean, and pizza for that matter. It's the but best pizza box in the industry. Absolutely, they're very, very, they yeah. I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, so let me kind of shift gears a little bit because I think we'll get kicked off the interwebs if we don't talk about AI. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it pretty, I'm pretty sure that, you know, for many companies, AI, and the hype around it, and there's some reality. We even have our own AI, and we have our own LLM and stuff like sure. that. But I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Right? You, if you don't, you're not cool. You got to be <laughs> one of the cool people now. And I know, you know, both companies have been investing heavily in AI. So how are how is this solution really helping customers meet those business objectives with AI? Um, yeah, what? I'll start with the, again, you know, kind of the, the bottoms up side of thing. But I talked about the fact that this is a truly appliance and fundamentally there's two core components to that. There's com the compute and the storage and they both play an important role here. On the compute side, we have fourth generation Intel processors. So you've got the throughput, you've got that processing power to really handle those AI workloads. And at the same time, we all know that AI is pretty useless if you don't have the data. So right, the storage plays an important, very, very important role here, which is having that linear scalable software defined storage, something we call the universal storage layer. Not only is it the storage that is in these appliances, the Apex Cloud Platform, but it also runs in the public cloud. So you got that portability of that as well. So you have the flexibility to use that AI on-prem and also the portability to be able to connect into the public cloud as well. Yeah. and. Thank you, by the way, because the AI itself would be upset with us if we yes. just <laughs> talk about it. It's true. Um, but for us, uh, you know, we've been talking about hybrid cloud for a decade. And I'll be honest, sometimes we have to explain what that actually means. AI now has actually validated why you need a hybrid cloud. Like you just mentioned, you know, the, the, the data is everywhere and you need a consistent compute everywhere. You need to be able to, you know, uh, fine tune your models, run your models in a different space. And so for us, this is really foundational. In fact, there's some other things we're, we're working towards, uh, you know, with our OpenShift AI initiatives to build on the work we're doing here that I, I think customers are going to love because I'm seeing a lot of buzzword compliance, right? Not everything is chat GPT, especially in the enterprise, you know. 
uh, they like to understand things like canonical source and provenance of the things that train their models. And so for us uh, at Red Hat, this, like, again, it's very foundational for us to continue that story and, and get the foundation of a hybrid cloud to create your AI. I'm sure we can do an entire segment on this because I, I think the stuff that you're doing with Intel and with others underneath the hood, plus what you're doing in the OpenShift platforms, and there's multiple uh, on top of there, I, I think we definitely could, but let's park that for another day and <laughs> let's kind of take a look at this from, and kind of bring it home from a perspective of partners. I mean, I'm partners are near and dear to my heart and Dell is really investing in. What is the feedback that you're getting from partners around this, Caitlin? Yeah, it's really exciting, especially when it comes to things like our service provider partners. The level of, you know, keeps using the same terms because it's so true. The level of experience and simplicity that we're building into this platform actually br enables them to really focus on the value add services they can bring around that and they can optimize the services that they're bringing to that platform in a very unique way. So Kindrel is a great example of that. They're going to be taking this new platform and expanding their existing offerings to be able to bring what already is an existing partnership, both from Red Hat and Dell, and really bringing that together. Yeah, that that's powerful. Yeah, it's it's that's been the really exciting thing is when the the partners are seeing that we're already working together. Because I mean, we're partners, and and so we're kind of coming to them as one entity. And I think that's something that we've gotten a lot of feedback on as well that they're looking forward to is that best of breed. So the same benefit we've talked about for customers, the partners are seeing the same. And as Caitlin said, they're excited to be able to put their expertise on top of this and, and what their additional value is. And it's one less thing they have to worry about. Oh, I, I, I can totally see that with, especially in the managed service provider, cloud service provider market, that's just huge for them to now have that container, reliable container on a reliable platform that makes it easy to use because that's their margin where they get that. And that's that's great for them. I mean, it's fantastic. And it's fantastic for their customers who want to get up and running really quick. Well, and keep in mind, right, we're also hearing from, you know, Kendrell and, and others, uh, it's also about the virtualization. Remember, within OpenShift itself, it's native that you can manage VMs, containers, and then even other clusters. And so, it's about if you also want to modernize your apps and your infrastructure, now you've got one complete solution to do that. So Caitlin, uh, super exciting, you know, this announcement. Where can partners and customers alike find out more information and where, where are you going to be talking about this? Everywhere. <laughs> you can start with dell.com slash openshift. Of course, you could talk to a Dell representative, partner representative, and excitingly, both companies are going to be at KubeCon coming up in Chicago in November. I hear Chicago's beautiful in November, so if you'll be there, <laughs> come by the booth. It's like after Detroit, didn't they learn their lesson? I mean, <laughs> it's like, come on. You know, like, but, really? Are yeah. we choosing that again? All right. But we'll be there. Uh, I think Red Hat, you'll also Absolutely. have a booth, so great time to come by. We can have some hands-on experience with the, what this is really going to look like. Yeah, and um, we'll be there as well, and I, I'm excited to be there myself, so it, I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I, I think get to talk all kinds of cloud native back then. So I want to thank you both for joining me. I, I think, you know, again, getting into this has been super helpful and I really appreciate it. So thank you for joining. Uh, thanks for having us. Thanks, Great. Rob. Yeah. And if you need more as well, as Caitlin said, there were some resources. There's also a resource tab down below and we'll be back with more around this. This solution will be following it very closely here on theCUBE and we appreciate you for watching. Thank you and take care.